Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopist. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about what uh, features are because features, the term features often comes up when you talk about machine learning, especially supervised machine learning, because these algorithms work by, uh, by training on a bunch of features generated from your own training data. That's why it's called supervised machine learning. Now, as the name suggests, uh, the feature is a characteristic that describes your data. Now, for microscopy and for, I, I should say, any image processing, our data is an image. So, uh, in fact, if you look at this specific image, how many regions can we identify, right? I mean, we can, I can say one, two, three, four for sure, and there may be a darker region here, so maybe five, right? So if you look at this image, we are telling that, okay, I want to segment this image, or in this image, there are five distinct regions. And for that, I'm using the pixel value or the brightness value to, to distinguish these different regions. So as you can imagine, pixel value can be a great feature. Now, other features can be something that describes the edges. For example, if I apply an edge enhancing filter to this digital image, now I can see all the hard edges, you know, where the pixel value changes abruptly, right? So that's what the pixel uh, edge detection uh, uh, filters or algorithms actually do. Now, similarly, you can use other filters. They can be texture describing, they can be orientation, local contrast. So in this example, the next one is a Gaussian blur. I'm blurring it just to get a different type of information from this image. Now I'm doing something else uh, to get a different type of uh, information. So this is another filter that's highlighting different uh, regions in uh, different uh, in, in a different way so in summary for images especially you can think of uh, uh, features as the result of various filters that you apply to this image now how do you select what filters to apply obviously as the user you can look at your images and you can clearly tell that okay these features are probably the best ones for your image or just throw like 1000 of different features at your image of course computationally a bit expensive, but who cares? Compute, computation is cheap. So just generate 1000 different filtered images and let the machine learning algorithm figure out exactly how to describe your various regions of interest. So this is the essence of supervised machine learning. Now, in the context of features, you probably heard uh, or will hear the term feature vector. Okay. Uh, a feature vector is nothing but, for example, if I apply 10 different filters to my original image, then my feature vector probably uh, will be of the size 10. Well, if you include the original image pixel, pixel value, then your feature vector will be size 11. One original pixel value and the other pixel values would be uh, corresponding to the filter that you applied. Okay, this is important. So what I'm some, uh, basically mentioning is, if I go back to the original image, if you look at uh, this spot right there, okay, where this, uh, 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 for example, let's look at this edge. Okay, in this, uh, uh, once the edges are enhanced, this region has very high pixel value. That spot has very high pixel value compared to a different spot. So in the feature vector that uh, corresponds to the edge defining uh, uh, feature, this value would be high and the other value would be low, right inside the grain. So for a different feature vector, this value would be low and that value inside would be high. So depending on what feature, the feature vector uh, is composed of the, these, uh, again, the feature vector is nothing but, uh, uh, let's say, a list of values at a given pixel that, uh, and each value corresponds to the pixel value uh, for uh, uh, the feature or the filter that you have actually applied. Okay, so that's what a feature vector is and it can be n dimensions n being the number of filters you apply. Okay, again, if you don't understand, hopefully by after coding you uh, start making, I mean things start uh, to make sense. Now, of course, the premise with supervised machine learning uh, is that the combination of these filters is going to describe the specific region of interest, right? Uh, uh, for example, if you have a bunch of cells in your image, uh, the premise is that all cells in an image have similar feature descriptor structure or similar feature vector. A typical cell can be defined uh, using a specific construction of a feature vector. So that's the premise. Now, how do we know uh, exactly which feature works uh, 
I mean, if you know the answer to that, then you don't need machine learning. Because if you know that edge detecting filter is going to work, then just use that filter. Why use like a million different filters? Uh, uh, in fact, this is exactly what we do for histogram-based image segmentation. If I go back to the original image, if I take this image and if I say, okay, this uh, bright region has value of, I don't know, 200 pixel value and the gray region has a value of like uh, 150 or 160, then I can just use my histogram to separate these different regions or to define these different regions, right? So you don't need machine learning. In fact, please do not use machine learning. Don't overkill, uh, you know, the problem in this case. But uh, uh, another good example would be if you already have a fluorescent image showing all the nuclei in blue, you know, because you stained it with DAPI or something, yeah, then what's the point of using machine learning? So I cannot stress on this fact much. I mean, nowadays people think about deep learning and all of this and try to use that to, to do a simple task. If, it's, if, if you don't need to use deep learning, don't. Just use traditional means, okay? But we use machine learning if we don't know what combination of these features will describe the region of interest. For example, if I have another region that has exactly the same gray level as this, this large region, but then has different texture, there is no way only the pixel value is going to describe that, right? I mean, now we need another feature that probably uh, describes the texture of this region. This region is smooth, the other region would be uh, not as smooth. So we need a different feature. Uh, to describe that. So sometimes you need uh, a bunch of these uh, and the combination of these features will effectively describe the regions that you're interested in. Now the next question is which machine learning should you use, right? I mean I, I kind of mentioned about deep learning. Now nowadays the latest happening thing is neural networks and deep learning but really I'd like to remind you that if you know what you're looking for yeah? if you have the subject matter expertise which I hope you do if you're a microscopist yeah, or image processing expert, then you are the feature engineer. Yeah, so you know what uh, uh, what describes your uh, regions of interest, right? Then you are the best engineer that can describe. So no neural networks or deep learning is going to do a better job than you engineering these features. In other words, what I mean is go pick the right type of descriptors or f uh, filters that describe your regions of interest. So. Uh, and, and uh, I, I should also mention traditional machine learning works the best and not the neural networks or deep learning if you know, if you have the subject matter expertise on most use cases. And this is especially true if you have a limited amount of data. I think I put together a slide just to describe that. So again, I got this off uh, internet and you can see there are numerous papers talking about uh, which one is a better approach. But just to summarize, if you have limited amount of data, meaning if you only have tens of images, uh, training images, yeah, the images that are labeled, then traditional machine learning, which I'm going to talk about in the next couple of tutorials, completely outperforms any other type of approach, neural networks or deep learning. But once you start having like a lot of data, uh, again, when I say a lot of data, not just data, a lot of labeled data, meaning uh, the, uh, for example, if you have uh, thousands and thousands of cells or neurons already labeled or traced, then deep learning may be the better method. Yeah, but for limited amount of data, nothing beats traditional machine learning. Okay, uh, so uh, let's let's actually uh, learn traditional machine learning. And again, there are a couple of many approaches, I should say, as part of uh, machine learning in general, traditional machine learning. But over the last decade, there are numerous papers that got actually published on this topic about which one is the best algorithm. There are so many. There is like naive base, support vector machine, random forest, uh, you know, a whole bunch of these algorithms. But uh, it looks like it typically boils down to one or two of these algorithms. One is uh, 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 random forest and the other one is support vector machines. So what we'll do in the next couple of tutorials is first of all learn how to extract these features but then once we extract the features how do we design a, for example a random forest uh, machine learning algorithm to train on these features and then go ahead and predict images uh, uh, you know or segment images if you want to call that so please stay tuned for those upcoming videos and i hope you found this tutorial to be useful and uh, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel that definitely encourages me to create more content thank you very much